Yeah, it was my girlfriend, because if we're gonna go see a movie, I don't care what movie you see. Which movie would you like to see? First thing out of my mind, you can pick the movie. And, if, and as soon as she goes, well, no, then I instantly decide. She, that's what she wants, you know. I, I'm engaging her in the decision process, and as soon as she gets a little washy, wishy washy, you can't have us both wishy washy. So I say, okay, you what? We're gonna do this one. Boom. And that's what she wants. So women want you to, when they say, to take charge in these types of things. So, welcome to the second video. Uh, where I'm sitting and having uh, deep discussions with Sam Perion. And uh, if you haven't checked out the first video, make sure you go check that out now. Um, in this video, we're going to be diving deeper into some of Zan, another principle of Zan's uh, that is beauty needs a witness. And this mm -hmm. is something that you say all the time. Yeah. And it's a real big theme even in your book, yeah. uh, Alabaster Girl. Make sure you check out alabastergirl.com if you're interested in uh, learning more about his book, which is amazing. Um, so let's dive in. Um, Beauty needs a witness. Wants to start with what does that mean to you? Well, I mean, my book, if somebody would have stopped me in the elevator and said, okay, listen, what's your book about in one word? Mm -hmm. Then I can only say it's about beauty. And and by that, I mean, it's reclaiming beauty. If you, like, you look at the world today and there's just not a lot of beauty left anywhere in art and architecture, in relationships, in a public discussion, discourse, social media is not a lot of beauty and um, and so so my whole thesis I guess is is that is to reclaim beauty beauty for men beauty in our masculine spirit and masculine edge right and beauty in the feminine grace which is you know, a life-giving spirit and so in this day and age women how can I say this sort of quickly since she was a little girl she wanted to be seen just want to be noticed that's what women do. that's what girls want right little girl they want to be seen as a beauty like they want to be seen as a beauty and as they grow up and it's this antagonistic judgmental um, um, mistrustful suspicious jaded kind of energy hits men and women you know and that's why you have this battle between the you know the the, the, the staunch feminist over here and the and the red pill or blue pill guys over here, you know, um, you have this battle and it's, it's because there's nobody is seeing and nobody's seeking and nobody's choosing to see beauty. So, but if a man stands on this earth, I'm trying to say it very fast. I wrote a whole book about it. So in 400 pages about this, um, when a man stands on this earth and he chooses that when he sees a woman for the first time or every time thereafter, I'm going to choose to see you as beautiful. And you're not talking about just women you're sexually attracted to? No. I'm talking about just choosing to see the world this way, which is a, which is a way of, of seeing the world a certain way. You guys say, well, yeah, the women are not beautiful because they're judgmental and cat. I get it. But you start with this default, this default position of, I'm going to see you as a beauty. That's how I want to see these girls. And your, your eyes soften. Everything about you sees things in a different light. And amazingly, because of the way you are showing up in the world, I'm saying it's fast, there's something that does become beautiful in the people who, who receive that, to re men and women. Well, you know, it's, it's a, there's a generosity of spirit that I'm talking about here. And the opposite of generosity of spirit is to be judgmental. I think judgmental, judge, judge mentality, judgmentalism, yeah. is there a word? I don't know. The, the, the quality of judge, being judgmental, like I don't like that person because blah, or they're so, so, that quality of, of being judgmental is the worst quality a man can have, or a woman, in this world in my mind. And the opposite of it is generosity of spirit, to have a default that I see you as, as a beauty, and I'm gonna receive you in my mind that way, until this shows that there's, that, that that's not the case. You default to that. It's an interesting principle because law of attraction says what you put out, you get back. So if you're putting out anger, you're gonna get angry. If I go yell at somebody or get angry at people, people yeah. are gonna get angry back. If you're literally seeing women, uh, other people, the world, yeah. and you're literally feeling beauty in your heart and your body, and you're seeing beauty, not faking it, right? Yeah. yeah. It makes sense that you're going to just open people all the time. People that were angry suddenly become sweet. Exactly. Now, it's not always the case, but it doesn't matter. You're doing your job. You might run into somebody who's who's 
really had a bad experience just recently or just really is not a nice person. Yeah. And you can, and I don't mean you're all this nice guy complimenting girls and running up to them, oh, you're so beautiful. No, it's, this, that's a needy energy. It's more like putting this energy into the world is, I see you from my frame of reference, from my standing on this earth, and I like beautiful things, and you look like a beautiful thing to me. That's how I feel. That's, that you, you seem like a beauty to me. And when you put that energy out there, it's not needy, it's not, we you like me, we you like me, we you like me. Um, they can feel it. And something is it, something gets uncovered in them, like you said, the way you said it, right? It's not like you're creating beauty. It's uncovering it where before it's guarded and hidden because the, nobody wants to expose themselves and be vulnerable, be open because everyone's attacking and, and taking advantage of and trying to get you in bed and all, you know what I mean? Well, it's just kind of like this idea that you got to go first. If you want people to respond in a certain yeah. way, you got to demonstrate and be the first person to exactly. see that way. Yeah. Um, so if you see, and this is something interesting, it is. Because as I hear it, you're saying, don't be attached to the to the outcome, because if you are, it's not going to work. So I got to just see the beauty. Is let's say that she's angry that day, yeah, and maybe she's typically angry, Could or be. he's typically angry. If you're saying you're time. being nice to so another guy, you know, and you just but you keep coming by and seeing that person, yeah. and keeping your heart open to the best of your ability. Because I know this is challenging. Yeah, what might happen the fourth or the fifth time you see this person? Have you well, ever had that experience? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, it's interesting because it's my years of experience with talking to girls, and I've got every kind of response. Anything any of these guys have ever seen, yeah. I've got it, too. Like, from throw a glass of water on me to, uh, can you leave me alone? Can you not see? I'm talking here with my, to, like, flick, 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 you know, yeah. to, to every kind of response. And what's interesting to me because, of, because I'm doing my job, I'm doing my best to be open and to see a beauty. And if she's not, a, if she doesn't re, re, re respond in, 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 a, in, a, in a beautiful way, in a, in a receptive way to that, that's okay too. And not, it's not my job to instruct women to not be bitchy or whatever. Like, okay, my energy's blocked, I'll go this way. And, and, and it's interesting because it's, as I think about it now, there's not a thing a woman can say to me that can affect me in any way these days. Nothing. She can say, well, you're such a blah, blah, blah. And she can say, and I don't get in my head and think, okay, well, that didn't work. I think, okay, my energy's blocked. I'll go this direction until somebody is there that has receptivity. It doesn't change me trying to see beauty. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know? So how often do you get around a woman that maybe is a little blocked? Or, Lots. And you just Lots. keep seeing her as a beauty and... 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later. Oh yeah, that happens all the time because, like I said, I, I'm, I'm moved. She yeah. can be like, um, I'm not interested, blah, blah. Okay, I'm a, I'm, I, I, I don't get like my back up or think, oh, I have to be more interesting or maybe I can make a joke or, or, or put her in her place. I just think, okay, my energy block. And if I see her again, I'm the same guy. I see her here again, you missed me. No, because I said, okay, okay, it's okay, okay. I'm over here. I'm over here if you, if, if you want to come talk to me. Asshole. Right? And then you see the third kind. Yeah, there's so many times that they're like, they start smiling and they open up because I don't change. I don't change who I am. Yeah, and so you become trustable because you don't change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good way of saying it because I, I, I don't try and alter my, my way I show up in the world with my energy because of her. Yeah. No, no, this is the way I am, you know? And she might be blocked because she could be a real sweet girl, but she's, she, she might have been like, had a really bad date with a guy yesterday who tried to, to you know, grope her or something. So she's really protective. You know, you don't know what's, what's going on with her, right? Um, it's so, you, but it doesn't matter. You just show up. You do your, your best to represent yourself, to, to, to see beauty in women, and the right ones will respond. Yeah. And how important, I, I know a lot of guys out there, and I, I was notorious. Uh, guilty of this early on, not just with this, with anything. Somebody would say, go out and do a gratitude journal, okay? And, and start to see, uh, write down everything, the things you're grateful for. And I would, uh, I would sit there and I'd go, okay, what am I grateful for? And I'd say, uh, and I would start to write stuff down because I had to. Yeah. And I would write down things that I knew I should be grateful for because I couldn't find anything that I was really grateful for. And so what I've realized later was it wasn't working. It was making me frustrated because I was trying to force it. Yeah, I trying to force it, yeah. Yeah, and so I had to reach a point. I had to- It's like trying to force yourself to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's positive thinking do it. it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I realized I had to actually go out and work until I found something I was actually fucking grateful for. 
I really could feel it. And that would start to teach my body what gratitude actually felt like. And so when I hear this, I don't want guys out there to go out and I'm gonna look at that girl like she's beautiful, but deep down inside, they don't feel it. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. There's a nuance to this, guys. And like I said, it's something I wrote a whole book about to try and capture the, the, the spirit of it and the essence of it. Because mm -hmm. guys say, well, I, I tried that last Thursday and it didn't work. All the girls just ignored me. And went, but there's something else, a different layer we're talking about here, you know? It's a, and it's hard to describe in words. That's why it took me, that's why, that's why I'm writing a second book. <laughs> because, it, and I'll probably be writing about this to the day I die, that spirit. There's just a, a, a magical quality that isn't explained by science, it isn't explained by chemicals and, you know, meat space and this kind of stuff, there's something else. And it's the way of, of you showing up in the world that people respond and it's, when you start to feel it, you start to show up in that way and you have a smile for everybody that walks by or the Starbucks girl, you have a smile for her. And she feels a little bit more softer and, and engaged and see, right? And that's you creating that, that you're creating that as opposed to being this guy who's walked through life. You're creating something as you go. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're creating an experience for people around you, you're creating culture in the city you live in. Just by you being, seeing things, being a, and gratitude. That is the, 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 the word, like all the, the, the greats of this world have a supreme sense of gratitude, you know? Yeah. Because it could be I a agree. different way. You could be in a coma. You could be, um, you know, stuck in a prison. I don't know, I'm just being extreme here, but, but you have a sense of gratitude of what, of, of the little things this day, that girl at Starbucks is cute. That's a gift to me and, I, and it makes you smile, which makes, directly and indirectly affects others, including her, right? And, and most people are blocked, so they, don't, they won't feel you, your gratitude, but the right ones will. And I think when you talk about this, 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 this gratitude is one aspect, and I think it even goes a layer deeper with beauty needs a witness, because with that, you're gonna have gratitude, you're gonna yeah. have appreciation, which is a slightly different energy. You could have curiosity. Absolutely. And, and I think all these energies could be at play. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I don't know how much, did you consciously cultivate these, these, these energies or no. did, did it just happen on its own? Yeah, all I've ever done, like, like I said, I, I did my, I'm still on, on this journey trying to discover it. And all I did was think about it, think about it, think about it, write about it. And I just tried to capture what is it? Why does somebody have a magnetism that someone else doesn't? What is it? You can't just say, well, he's standing a certain way or he's got this cool tie or there's some quality, and I've just been trying to, and you can't write it because no one can ever actually have the answer, but I write around it. I'm trying yeah. to write around it to so try and catch the impression of it, right? So what is it that makes a man compelling? That a woman meets him, she thinks he's not that good looking, he's not that tall, he's not rich at all, but I can't stop thinking about him. And I try to write about that. And part of that is generosity of spirit. I don't mean they're buying. So generosity is another one. Absolutely, yeah. buying the table, I mean, curiosity is incredible. I have this notion, I wrote in my book, that intelligence is curiosity. And that's, that's all it is. If you're curious about something, you're intelligent about it. If you're curious about computers, you don't need a computer course, you are magically good at them. If you're, if you're intensely curious about them, right? Yeah. And the lack of curiosity is a lack of intelligence in my mind. That's why you see people that just sit there and receive, you know, watch television and just absorb, 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 and they give nothing up. You know who uh, you know who George Washington Carver is, right? Yeah, yeah. So he was. There's a book called uh, "The Man Who Talks to Flowers." Have you read? I haven't read it, but I've heard of it. It's a little tiny book, easy read. It's a beautiful, amazing read. I've read it several times. It's written by a man named Glenn Clark about of George Washington okay. Carver. And um, Glenn Clark wrote about the two men he thought were the most influential men in uh, of his time. One was Glenn Clark, with one was Walter Russell. The Walter Russell one is called "The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe." Another amazing little read. The um, George Washington Carver one, they, he was known, and a lot of people don't know this, he was known for figuring out all these medicinal uses for flowers. Yeah, like before peanuts the peanuts and stuff, right? Before the peanuts. Oh, okay. And he did the same thing with peanuts. Ah, and so okay. he, he spent hours out in, out in the forest studying and, and flowers. Just messing about with them. Yeah. And, uh, and somebody asked him once, hmm. um, and this just made, you made me think of this, somebody asked him once, how do you figure out all these uses for the flowers? And, it's the same, and it was the same process used for peanuts. And he said, it's really simple. You love or appreciate, and I'm gonna paraphrase, I don't know the exact sentence, but 
love or appreciate the flower so much that it reveals all its secrets. Yeah, there you go. And people hear that and they go, that's a great metaphor. Now tell me how it's done. Yeah. And I'm like, he just did. That's exactly how it's yeah. done. He just, that's that. Stand the time, yeah. And sitting there loving something so much, you get all these hits and realizations and understandings because of the yeah. sheer love of it. Yeah, yeah. And your mind, think about anything you've ever loved out there a lot. Think of how easy it was to learn. Think how fast you realized things and came up with stuff. And you literally did that. And that's where beauty needs a witness comes yeah. from. You did that with women. Yeah, women taught me this, you know? Yeah. Like I've always said that, like, like you know, honestly, Brian, there's, I've never had a male teacher um, that taught me something, you know, it's always been women. And it's not that women are enlightened and they set out to teach me something. They have no clue either. <laughs> but just observing the way, what they say and what they really mean, observing what the flow and to, uh, watching them, I got uh, and I got the lessons I needed to know how to interact with them, mm -hmm. right? So they never. It, it's I've always said that you know my all my learnings came from women just by being in the in the in the, in the company in the arms of women all my life, you know. And I get a sense of it. So yeah, this makes me think of the dominant and submissive because a lot of people think of the dominance in charge and. And whereas it appears that way, a lot of times the, the submissive is in charge and the submissive is really teaching the dominant so much. I guess, yeah. Because of all the subtle emotions. And how much, think about how much that dominant, say in a BDSM relationship, has to be, if they're really doing their job right, has to be completely aware of every little bit of feeling and nuance on the submissive, mm -hmm. to be completely present for that submissive, to be the best on, and how much you're learning from that. Yeah. If you're doing it right. Right. I'm, I guarantee you there's plenty not doing this, but if you're doing it right, you actually have the best. Yeah, it's because you're receiving too. Yeah. You're, you're, you're checking in, right? Constantly. You Constantly, never yeah. stop. Where is she at now? What's she feeling? Is this, where's her edge? Where's, where, I, you know, yeah. what does she need right now? Not what do I want to do with her? What does she need right now? Yeah. On top of exactly. what? Exactly. So that you're, you're, you're in, in part of your leadership experience is, is engaging and receiving and checking in uh, you know, exactly. across the board. Like there's a lot of guys think, well, and there's, it's being taught out there, well, you, you're the man, you say what you want and you just demand it, right? So you say, okay, we can go to this movie, get your things, you know, like that sort of thing. But, and the opposite of that is like, well, what do you want to watch? Yeah. Um, well, you pick the movie, which is, you know, Weasley nice guy energy, right? Well, that, that's a really good point. It's not just what does she need, it's what do I need, what do we need? Yeah. What do we need? What's going to take us to the next level? Yeah, with my girlfriend, because if we're going to go see a movie, I don't care what movie you see. Which movie would you like to see? First thing I'm like, you pick the movie. And, you're just, and as soon as she goes, well, no, then I instantly decide. Mm -hmm. she, that's what she wants. You know, I, I'm engaging her in the decision process. And as soon as she gets a little wishy washy, washy, we can't have us both wishy washy. So I say, okay, you what? We're going to do this one. Boom. And that's what she wants. So women want you to, when they say to take charge in these types of things, instead of like waiting for her to make a decision. Right? Say, you can pick it because I don't really care. Okay, listen, we'll do this one then. Boom. And then you have respect from women. You know, anyway, that's another subject. That's, that's a great subject. But um, I do want to ask you a question. It's something I've been thinking about a lot. I do a lot. I realize I do it a lot. When you like a woman, when you're with a woman you really like, yeah. how often do you just sit there? And I've, I've been notorious. I do this all the time. I'll just sit there and I, when I'm really appreciating or loving or enjoying her, even if I just met her. Yeah. I might just sit there and, and enjoy her for a little bit. I'll look into her eyes, I'll watch her do something. Yeah. And then she catches me, of course, and I love her when she catches me. She's yeah. like, what? What? I'm like, nothing. And, and I just let her feel it. I'm telling you, that's the secret that nobody knows to, to fantastic relationships. Guys think, well, I have to be romantic, so I have to buy her flowers. And you don't have to do any of those types of things. That means nothing. It's the little, tiny moments when she's walking by in her sweats and she's about to do the dishes in the kitchen and she walks by and you just look at her with that appreciation and desire and love for four seconds she's walking by and say, sweetie, you look so beautiful, I just want to say it and let her go. Yeah. Those little drops that you do throughout the day is the secret to all the greatest relationships out there. It's not like they do some massive thing to show my love, not at all. It's little tiny things that, so that, even a girl you just met, and you just say that little tiny appreciation of remember what we talked about in the last video to be seen. She's noticed, and and your eyes notice her. I can be talking to you, blah blah blah. And Deanna walks by, and like, sorry, hold that thought. Anyway, and she can feel that. 
she feels that, you know, that's the, that's the secret to, in my mind, you know, I always say everything's a secret. Everything's the, the last thing you need to know is the eighth wonder of the world. And then the next subject comes up, this eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> <laughs> We're up to 200 eighth wonders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to cultivate this is, is really, I think is important. I think a lot of guys need to cultivate this energy of, of witnessing beauty in the world. And I think to cultivate it, and you tell me if you agree, and, and I'd love to hear your insights on this, is you you need to start seeing beauty more than just in women. Yeah. You need to start seeing it everywhere. Right? Yeah, in yourself too. In, oh, that's in, really important. That's yeah. great insight. To see, to, to, to make friends with yourself, to, um, you know, we've all been hurt, we've all been abandoned, we've all hurt others, we've all hurt ourselves, we've all been abused and all this kind of stuff. We've all had unhappy childhoods. And to just look at your young self in the mirror and shake hands with your young self and say, oh, you know what, say I forgive you for the transgressions because we all have, we've all transgressed, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, that's a deep subject too. I think it's a deep subject. I wanted to talk, one of the subjects I want to talk about in this series was uh, fashion because I think fashion has a lot of deeper underpinnings in it. Okay. But when I look at you, and, and I think we're going to talk about that in the next video, but I think there's a lot deeper message to fashion than people realize. And when I look yeah. at you, fashion is part of your expressing your own beauty yes. and loving yourself. Yeah. Because you, you don't just put on these things to, this whole thing. to look good. Yeah, yeah, well, you, you, you're creating art, and then you're looking at yourself and enjoying the art you're creating, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I want to get back to that later. I want to cover it now. But for somebody out there that's cultivating this energy, learning to see it everywhere, and including himself, that's yeah. the fashion part. But let's say he's going out there and he wants to learn to see it in the world, and he's not good at this. He's a slightly angry, grumpy, um, and and you talk about okay, you got to see it in the eighty year old woman. He walks in the street, sees an eighty year old woman, and goes. I don't get it. I don't see it again. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you help them? How do you tell them to start cultivating that? Well, oh, that's a good question. I think and, by, by cultivating curiosity, you know, because curiosity is, curiosity is something that can be consciously chosen. Mm -hmm. You can, you can, you can stop yourself and choose to be curious about her experience in life and what she's seen and, and where, where she's going right now. You can be curious about that. It's a choice. Yeah as opposed to just breezing on by. Curiosity is a, is, a, is, a, is a calming of yourself, a stillness that comes into you as you wonder about the experience. As you wonder about your experience with seeing this old woman, you wonder about yourself, right? So I think um, you, you cultivate it by choosing to be curious about something as opposed to non-seeing it, something flashes by. Instead, you pause and say, okay, well, what is her experience? What has she been like? Was she, a, 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 you know, when she was 16, when she's a real a beautiful little flower or something, you, you're curious about that. I want to know, you know? And then that opens up that, um, that awareness of others and seeing others, I think. Seeing the other, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I think curiosity is one of the most powerful Absolutely. emotions there is on the planet. Yeah. It sparks, it, it is a slight, it's like a, to me, it's two rocks sparking. And then when that spark yeah. hits, boom. Oh, yeah, and it's not an interrogation. Oh, I want to know, blah, 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 blah. Where did you grow up? And it's not that, it's just being curious about, you know, our path through life, her path through life, the intersection of me and Brian having this conversation and, and third party, and, you know, and the whole thing fascinates me. Well, I'm very curious about all these topics. So when I ask these questions, I'm looking for something I'm super curious about to, and then I, that I want to go deeper with. Yeah. You hear me doing it as I ask you. Yeah. I'm like, and that's the difference between, if I was asking interview questions. Yeah, and if I, I was answering them, yeah. right? We're not, he's not asking questions, I'm not answering. We're kind of like scratching our heads, which is what it should be, right? And exploring our emotional exactly. relationship to the topic. Exactly. And, and letting you see us have emotions in relation to the topic yeah. versus just spewing a bunch of data. Uh, I got here's a here's a here's an answer for you, and I got a good answer for that one too. And here's my here's my five point list on how to cultivate curiosity. Yeah, and uh, put your shoulders like this. Yeah, look at them like <laughs> this. Your head. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that's what people do, literally, yeah. right? And um, yeah, that's one of my pet peeves. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you guys to go out and start cultivating curiosity. Mm -hmm. So you and and curiosity specifically around beauty in the world and beauty with things you wouldn't normally see beauty. Because when you start to see beauty, and, and I'd love to hear your response on this too, when you start to see beauty in the old woman, the old man, you start to see the art in them, like if you take a black and white photo and create art out of it, or 
or of the old building or a, a, a tree that's lost all its leaves and is now mangled this way. And then you start to see beauty in the flower too. That's when I think light, you're going to start to understand this topic at a much deeper level. Yeah. So is there anything you want to say about that? No, I just think that, you know, it's, it's the powerful, powerful quality of, of, of truly engaging magnetic powerful men. And it's not a dominance thing. And it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it, it's, 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 a, it's a noticing the world around you. Yeah. And it's a beautiful energy, man. Yeah. So with that said, I think that's a perfect note to stop on for this topic. Uh, I think for the next topic, or well, definitely for the next topic, we're going to be taking a look at fashion, but not just from the typical, what do I wear to get a girl? I'm talking about what is an expression of your beingness, who you are, how you feel, and why Zan, because Zan has a unique sense of fashion that I always love seeing. It's just, you, you wear a lot of, like you're wearing that, that scarf. We were discussing, <laughs> discussing that, gar- that scarf over breakfast, because it's, it's a John Barbados. I love John Barbados. And... Um, and so uh, we're going to get into that next. I'm not going to get into it now. Um, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give us a like. Uh, make sure to check out uh, alabastergirl.com, arzamorada.com. Arzamorada.com. Uh, I can never put those two words together. I can say Amorati experience. I can say Amorati conference. I can say all these different. I can't put those two words. My, <laughs> I, I stumble. And I've known Zan for years. I still can't do it. Definitely check out his book. I know I talked about it in the last video, but I'm going to give you a reminder. He gives these books away. All you have to do is pay for shipping. Yeah. Um, he signs them. He While they're them still them. available. Yeah, what, what he said about a thousand miles. A thousand, yeah. That's gonna go fast, guys. So make sure you get a physical copy of this book while they're still available. Go to um, alabastergirl.com and, and get your copy today. With that said, make sure to like the video. If you got value out of this, make sure to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, comment. We love your comments. We're constantly checking the comments and responding to them. And remember, only the confident. See you in the next video.